Hello and welcome to Tutorial CU. My name is Yannick and in this video we will explore how to use the yield keyword in C Sharp. Let's just create an iterator that can return sequences of values without requiring the entire sequence to be generated up front. Well, that sounds quite complicated, right? Now, let's break it down. So, here's an application and you probably know what's going on. We have a method here. We just create a list and then we check for even numbers. So, let's say we put in 10. We just check which numbers are even, so we use the modulo operator. And then we add our even number to our list and we finally return that list, so we return an i enumerable, which is like any kind of collection. So for example, a list. Now here we have our void main, so we simply generate that list right here and then iterate over it using a for each loop. So if I now start the application, then we will call get even numbers. So when I set a breakpoint here in line 11 and start the application, for sure, we will see that numbers, if I just hover above that, or we can also take a look at our locals, we take a look at numbers here, you can see the count is 5. Well, that makes sense because we're sending in 10 and 10 numbers in total, well, result in 5 even numbers. Now that collection got created before we reached our for each loop for sure. We called it, it got generated and afterwards we will iterate over it using our for each loop. Well, you probably think that this is the only way how you can handle it, but that's not right. Now before we move on, take a look at the problem and then see how we can use yield. Please check out our C-Shop Progress Academy. It is a self-paced online course that teaches you in-depth ASP.NET Core, unit testing, C-Shop software design patterns and Angular. We offer a 14-day money-back guarantee and I'm absolutely sure that this is the fastest way on how you can progress as a C-Sharp developer. You can find the link in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. So let's take a look at a problem here. Let me just dramatically increase the number of, well, numbers. So we will replace the number 10 with 1 billion. Well, that will take a longer time, right? So if I just start the application, let's just wait for our result. I will in the meantime resize my user interface. I would say from my hardware, it would typically take five to 10 seconds and there we go. So now for five seconds, our application was entirely blocked because it took such a long time to generate all the even numbers from that call in line nine here. But anyway, now we have all of our even numbers. Now let's just write 10 here again. There we go. And let's just create an iterator by using yield. We don't have to change too much. What we just do is we remove our list here. We don't need that. We remove our return, which looks quite weird, right? You probably used to return anything from a method, but instead of returning anything, we're going to yield something. So yield return I. It's basically exactly the same stuff, but instead of adding it to a list, we will immediately return the value from the iterator that we're creating right here. So by using yield, we are creating an iterator. What does that mean? Well, basically that means that now when we call numbers, let me just do that, you will now see that we will jump immediately into line 11. So our numbers uh, list should be ready, right? Well, no, it is not. It's only an iterator, but that iterator hasn't started yet. And as you can see, there are no values inside. So the current value is still zero. So there is nothing inside of it because it's just the iterator setup, but it hasn't started. And it will start once we iterate over it. So numbers is our iterator and it starts in the moment where we start our for each loop and iterate over it and then we will one by one go through all of the values so let me set a breakpoint in line 23 here now by using f10 i can always jump into the next line of code and process the next step so let me hit f10 and we will start iterating over it so right now you can see that we are jumping into our get even numbers iterator and we will return i where i currently is zero Alrighty, so now F10 and we get back to our for each loop. In the meantime, numbers has a value and it's still zero, but that's fine because zero was our first number. Now let's jump to the next number. We will go into our yield here again. We will calculate the even number, return it. Now let's take a look at numbers again. You can see numbers has now two because two is an even number. And next up, when we go through it and we will return something, it will be four where I will be four. Just a second. There we go. If we open that up, you can see i is 4 for sure, right? So in that way, 
you will get the values from the iterator while you are creating the sequence. You don't have to wait for the entire sequence to get created. No, you can just take each value, one another and perform some actions with it. Like add it to your user interface, use it for a different calculation or whatsoever. Alrighty, so in a single sentence set, with yield, you can return values from a sequence without the need of the entire sequence to get created up front. And what you can see right here is an iterator which we have created by using the yield keyword. Awesome, so it gets executed when we iterate over the iterator, for example, with a for each loop. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope that you have learned something new and I will see you back in the next video.